welcome here at the SPS Fair. I'm looking forward to my interview with Martin Cotta from Analog Devices. Hello, my name is René Trafnicek and it's uh, my pleasure to interview Martin Cotta, President of ADI EMEA and Vice President of Industrial Multi Markets Globally. Hello Martin. Good morning René. Nice, nice to, to meet talk you. To you. <laughs> um, of course my first question has to be, tell us about analog devices. Well, uh, analog devices, uh, when you look at the world as it is now, we have, we have of course our history on analog technology and analog components. Uh, and it's becoming more and more important as you see the real world uh, being instrumented more, much higher information. So really we are the company of the intelligent, intelligent edge. We do everything in terms of real world interaction, real world interfacing. $12 billion sales, wow. uh, <laughs> but all of the technologies that you can imagine in terms of uh, measuring, sensing, precision, high speed, power, so our role in the world is to power the intelligent edge. When you look at this world of AI and new digital factories, that's very much our world. So what would you say, what is the intelligent edge? Ah, that's a, <laughs> a good topic. <laughs> okay. Uh, you look at everything that's required by industry. Mm -hmm. uh, traditionally, industry was, we might call it a sneaker net. You had a person walking around with a tablet looking yeah. at what the pressure, temperature of the different technologies in a process might be. Mm -hmm. Now you have a world where uh, really you have to have real-time model of the factory to drive higher efficiency, to drive, drive more efficiency of power usage. We're all concerned about the future of the planet. Uh, and you look at things like reshoring, making sure you get more productivity. Industry has been phenomenal over the last three decades, gone from about $100 uh, to about $500 per uh, person in terms of productivity. So it's a very interesting time when you see how the intelligent edge, how the measurement and data at the edge is mm. driving this huge efficiency. We need it more and more when you look at the future of the planet and sustainability. Yeah, it's a big topic, uh, sustainability. Um, how can digital automation help us meet net zero goals? It's very interesting. Uh, if you look at the how energy is used in the world, about just under 40%, 37% of energy is used in factories. Mm -hmm. About another, uh, pretty much bringing it up to 50% is used in factories and buildings. So as we deploy these intelligent edge technologies, they're all about getting more out of the same energy or less energy. A very simple example is a motor. A motor system accounts for about 70% of the energy in HVAC systems in how you power a factory. Making a motor more efficient is a big plus for the planet. So we need to get twice the efficiency out of every joule of energy that we use today. And that is the best chance the world has in driving to the 1.5 degree uh, climate accord. Yeah, of course. Uh, it's a very urgent need, yeah. um, but it's something we can actually do a lot about. Uh, so that's what, so our goal is, our purpose mm -hmm. is to drive health of person, health of planet. My job at industrial is really health of planet in yeah. a lot of ways. Right? So it's about how we drive with our, with companies, a lot of companies here at the show, mm -hmm. large industrial companies, how we drive higher output, higher efficiency, less waste. Uh, this is all to that bigger goal. Yeah. Um, what about power management specifically? It's really important, right? You take something like, um, everybody talks about the importance of semiconductor and going to things like AI systems with huge data centers, or you look at the need for uh, advanced test equipment, needing to have uh, better use of energy. Uh, getting a couple of more percent efficiency on power management drives a direct efficiency in terms of the overall energy of the data center or the factory or one, wherever it might be. So we can, with some of our solutions with this silent switching technology mm -hmm. and higher efficiency of power conversion, taking out some uh, inefficient power stages, architectural changes, we can drive uh, a couple of extra percent efficiency. Motors is probably even 15% more efficiency we can get well. from better management of the system of the yeah. motor and of the power of the motor. Okay. So it's huge. Yeah, absolutely. Um, 
what would you say, how is ADI's technology solving automation's biggest challenges? The world of automation is going after every piece of efficiency. Mm -hmm. So automation really is a digital factory. Uh, so that replaces what used to be that person walking around with a clipboard with uh, always on real-time representation of the factory. You see it everywhere at the show. Mm -hmm. People talk about digital twins. They talk, well, what does this mean? It really means that uh, instead of having once per day sample of what's going on in the factory, you have constant real-time uh, data mm -hmm. that represents uh, maybe it's a motor that's not as efficient as it should be balanced to the load. It could be something that saves energy throughout the whole use of the, the plant. So it's a, it's a huge impact uh, in the difference it can make. It's got an element of higher data for the factory, so we would say the connect piece of it goes to gigabits instead of kilobits. Mm -hmm. Everything is digitally switched, whereas before it was manually plugging yeah, big cables and lock. pushing them. <laughs> yeah. um, and of course, they're complex signals. Uh, and then of course, the edge, the intelligent edge is instrumented. So a lot more measurement at the edge. It's predictive. So we couldn't talk about anything without the word uh, machine learning and AI. Mm -hmm. The future will include uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning. So that instead of training everything to be suboptimal, you, it will be able to adapt itself to the optimal load of, for example, the, I'm using the motor lock, but let's use the motor again. Yeah. It could be the optimal load of the motor. So you're, you're extending the life mm -hmm. of the technology and the industry. You're making it more efficient. You're basically making it a greener planet. Also with better economic output. Okay. Um, so co-creation is a part of ADI's DNA, of course. Um, how did that come about? Uh, Co-creation, I think, is really looking at the problem of the customer at an architectural level. Um, we have many, many customers that have realized that semiconductor can now do more at the end application than would have traditionally been. There was a time when semiconductors really were components that somebody uh, that was maybe in the job for 30 years mm. put them together with a little circuit. Now it's the world of software defined. Yeah, so of course. You know, companies like uh, Siemens, ABB, Schneider would all have bought digital assets and expect to be able to get at the end application. So we're finding that many of the automotive customers wanting to build a more efficient factory now would come to us with these larger industrial companies to make the end goal more efficient because the semiconductor can now get at that end performance. Very simple example is gigafactories. Mm -hmm. People are building factories for batteries. So each of the, it needs to be gigahertz of data, yeah. it needs to be fully digitally controlled, and it needs to have much more edge-based instrumentation to make less waste of the battery. So things like formation of the battery takes a long time, 20 hours. Uh, believe it or not, it takes 20 hours to form a battery. Wow. So yeah. doing it with technology that's faster and more precise can make that factory much more efficient. Um, so these are the kinds of problems that we need to solve, but we can't solve them alone. We need our partners and we need the end users. So now they come work with us in Catalyst mm -hmm. after these specific problems. That's beside our R&D plants or our R&D engineers together with the end users. It could be uh, one of the car manufacturers, it could be one of the industrial partners, would solve together a particular problem full time instead of occasionally going to meet. Now they work full time mm -hmm. on the same problem. Okay. So real progress much faster. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what is ADI Catalyst? What, how, how Catalyst would you comes it? from the word accelerate, right? So okay. it's an accelerator. And what it is really is an accelerator of adoption of new technology. Mm -hmm. Semiconductor is extremely powerful in what it can do. Every uh, 18 months, the processing in the semiconductor still doubles. Uh, Moore's law, right? Um, but when you put together at the system level, uh, and get the benefit of the system level architecture of let's say a power design together with the signal processing design getting after something that is the output of the factory it's extremely powerful so it might be a robot that needs to have much better precision of control to do a special machining mm -hmm. um, so it takes what's inside the silicon together with the system knowledge together with the end user to do this so it's really solving the toughest problems yeah. that are the highest value together with the value chain of each of the people in the value chain that matter. 
it's very exciting. Yeah, absolutely. We, we thought we'd have <laughs> to grab people and bring them in. Yeah. But people are actually very much looking to come in and collaborate. And I think it's because the world of semiconductor has now become an application level impact much more than before. Mm -hmm. um, can you give me just an example of the collaborative power of the Catalyst? Uh, we have many, many examples. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, I'll pick some. Uh, I'll pick two. If pick it's two. Okay, okay to pick two? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. <laughs> we'll pick two. Uh, one is on, uh, everybody knows about EVs. So mm -hmm. electric vehicles, battery systems are critical. We had a new technology that uh, typically would be very slow to be adopted called wireless battery management systems. Uh, what it does is it takes a huge wiring harness out of the car but with the same robustness of connectivity and control, it allows us to wirelessly manage it. So it means all of the battery systems are much more modular. Um, lots of our automotive customers, General Motors were very public, they've announced it publicly, mm -hmm. that they want to adopt this new technology much faster because it gives about 20% extra range in the car with that and the better precision of control of the battery. So they brought a team to Catalyst, work with us, prove that this is very robust in all these conditions. Uh, and of course, the technology now is adopted probably two years quicker than it would otherwise have been. So that's one example. An industrial example would be Johnson & Johnson uh, wanted to do uh, much more customized uh, robotic manufacturing for healthcare. Uh, in that case, they would have come to us mm -hmm. with their engineers, worked on uh, a new robotic uh, answer with this a Sense AI technology that we have um, to drive again the future of robotics for healthcare. That would include companies, uh, middle stand companies in Germany like SICK and others. Mm. Uh, so it's a village of innovation. So we bring ourselves, the end use, and then others in the value chain together to do something <coughs> much faster than would be done otherwise. So it's probably each time maybe two years faster adoption of technology than would otherwise be possible. Yeah, it's real quick. <laughs> yeah, it's very exciting because yeah. you get to really have an impact on the end problem quicker. Our uh, engineers are very excited by it. Okay, uh, I know sustainability is a real big topic for your um, personal. How else ADI is supporting the green agenda? It's uh, it's all about um, making sure that we have we drive this purpose of I think. Everybody personally connects to this, all our engineers, it's the one topic I keep getting uh, asked about. Mm -hmm. um, we are doing it from our own carbon footprint, driving uh, net zero. Um, so we feel very responsible ourselves in terms of what we do. But the biggest impact that we make is the impact of our technology in getting higher efficiency. Uh, so that's two ways. One is industrial. We have a goal of enabling 2x efficiency of every industrial and building. Mm -hmm. uh, that 50% of the energy, yeah. we have to make that twice as efficient. And a lot of our investments are based on that. Secondly, uh, we realize that to get to the net zero, you need to have a replacement of fossil fuels with cleaner energy. So our team on EV is very much part of a 9x increase in use of green sources of energy. So it's actually a very large part of ADI's business already, about 30%. Oh. And we see it growing over the next five years to become a bigger portion of ADI's revenue because it's an area that thankfully, there's a lot of capital investment also coming into. So it is, the world of the digital factory is very much connected to the world of higher efficiency of industry, which is a lot of capital coming into new factories for, um, semiconductor mm -hmm. with chip sacks, new factories for EVs, uh, but also taking old brownfield factories and making them more efficient. Uh, so I think um, we see this as, a, as the biggest investment, investable theme in industrial. And I think our customers very much align with that. It's a huge topic in Europe. Yeah, absolutely. Um, one, more, one more question comes to my mind. Um, energy crisis, supply chains and labor shortages. And now we talk about uh, sustainability. Aren't there too many construction sites for the industry right now? Uh, it's a great question. You know, I think um, one of the things that I get a lot of satisfaction out of is when we enable one of these uh, digital factories you get higher output, mm -hmm. it's lower energy, uh, and in many cases, you're replacing, uh, I think uh, we looked at 
the journey of a simple screw, right? Uh, so it travels 20,000 miles around the world between getting made in China and coming back to uh, going into a subsystem in China and then coming back to a bigger system somewhere else on the planet. Yeah. This is not efficient. So I think um, many of the investments are aimed at a very big efficiency of purpose. We have 8 billion people on the planet now, uh, but yet there are too few skilled people in industries. Mm. Right? So I think we should embrace technology to get to that future that is much greener, much more efficient. It is a world of the intelligent edge. It will be a world of much more uh, intelligence, AI systems, adaptable systems at the edge. Uh, and I think it's going to be a much better result for the planet than the global structure that's there now in terms of um, industries. Yeah. So yeah, you're right. I, I think uh, it will result ultimately in fewer factories, but they'll be much more efficient um, and I think much higher output. Thank you very much. Yeah, that's it. And uh, thank you very it's much very for the money. interview, thank <laughs> Martin you. Cutter from uh, ADI. It was nice to meet you. And uh, yeah, wish you all the best for your goals in the future. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Maybe. Well, we're very excited by it, Ray. So thank you very much for your time and uh, look forward to uh, the rest of the show. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.